Just so I can get an idea, who's never sent an email before? That's a joke. I'm not, I figured everybody had. Okay. Uh, so hi, I'm Doug. Uh, if you if I look familiar, you may know me from the uh, Alamo City Python Group in San Antonio. I help organize that down there, uh, and I work at Mailgun. So that basically means this is going to be a super biased presentation. There are other companies that do the same thing we do, uh, but I think we do it better. So, uh, and uh, I've been there a relatively short time. So while I do work with a lot of email experts. I don't think I'm one myself yet, uh, so please save the really hard questions for later when I can reach out and phone a friend. Uh, so let's talk about email. Right, what is an email? And this is sort of like a, it's not like an existential question, but if we're here at PyTexas, we want to send email with Python. So what is the, what is the data structure look like for an email, right? Like how do we compose one? Uh, and it looks like a mime, but not that kind of mime, this kind of mime. Uh, which is uh, just a text format that's defined in a bunch of RFCs, and if you're the kind of person that enjoys RFCs, uh, there's a bunch of them. You can go read a little detail uh, how everything is put together. Uh, but the cool thing about RFCs is that they're standardized, they're old, and so a lot of stuff has been implemented already. Uh, and there's a really cool uh, standard library package in Python for creating email. Uh, the API actually changed in Python 3.6, so the examples I'm showing here is the new way of doing it. Uh, it's not radically different, but uh, the classes that you use are, are different than they used to be. Uh, and so, pretty straightforward, you create this email message class, you create an object out of that, uh, and then the way you set email headers is basically just like a Python dict. You know, you just got a key and a value, and there you go. Uh, and it's got a bunch of methods that you can use to uh, create your content. And so the example here, this is basically hello world email. Uh, and this is just a plain text email, which is kind of boring, but it's pretty easy to, to create these things. Uh, a little more interesting example is uh, sending both text and HTML in a single email. Now you always want to do that, uh, number one, because people receiving may not have their clients configured to read HTML, so as a fallback, they're going to be able to read whatever you send in text. Uh, but also there are certain email providers that will just outright reject your email if it has only HTML and doesn't include a plain text part. Uh, and so with the new API, you basically use the same class. Prior to 3.6, you had to use a different class if you wanted to include two different parts in your email. Uh, so if you're doing new development, I highly recommend you, you just jump to the latest and use the new classes to, to do all this work. Uh, and so the way you add the, the, the plain text is basically the same what I just showed. Um, you would add an alternative as your HTML, and you can, you can just add it as a second part to your email there. Uh, embedding images uh, is kind of tricky. Like adding images as attachments, you just use one more part and, and add the image there. Uh, embedding them in the HTML, you're actually going to have to create these uh, CIDs. Uh, and those magic numbers there are just because the, the IDs come with brackets on the end, so you've got to pop those off to, to embed them in the HTML. Uh, and then once you got that, uh, once you've added the part to your email, uh, the other magic number there is you just got to get back to that second part where the HTML is and attach the image to that. Uh, and that's basically it, right? Uh, pretty straightforward. You can, you know, if you want to make like real fancy HTML or whatever, you can do some like Jinja and get those uh, things rendered for you. Um, cool. So now we can make email. Let's go ahead and send it. Uh, and the way we send email is with SMTP, which I'm pretty sure everybody's familiar with if you've ever set up your own email client uh, without like the little wizard that guesses everything. Uh, and there's another RFC there you can go read if you want to read uh, or if you want to know exactly how, how this stuff works. Um, and because it's standardized, uh, it's also included in the standard library, right? It takes three lines of code to send an email using Gmail, for example. Uh, and really all you need here is your username, password, you connect to the Gmail servers. Um, Gmail requires like SSL from the get-go, and that's why I'm using this SMTP SSL class here. And for a, a lot of purposes, this might be good enough for sending all the email you need to send, right? Like if you just got a Jenkins box that's going to email you at the end of the build every night, like this is probably good enough. A um, couple of issues, though, if you want to do a little bit more than that. One of them is it doesn't matter what you send for uh, the message from address. Google's going to strip that out and put your Gmail address in there. Now, if you're running a business, that's not going to look good, right? Like, if I get an email from a business that's from a Gmail account, I, it makes me suspicious, right? It doesn't look legitimate. Uh, so that's one issue. And the other one is if you're going to be sending a lot of email, um, Gmail's going to cut you off. I think their, their hard limit right now is about 500 emails a day. Anything beyond that, they're just going to reply with, sorry, you're over your quota. That's it. You don't get any more. 
Uh, and so what we want to do is send a whole lot of email, right? Uh, there's legitimate ways for wanting to do that. Uh, transactional email is one of those, right? Like somebody creates an account on your website, you want to send them a welcome email and password resets and all that sort of things that you send emails for. And so because these are all open technologies and we all know open source is great, there's uh, a whole lot of email servers out there that you can just download and run, right? And so can I just do it myself? Can I just spin up a cloud account, you know, install Postfix or, or send mail or whatever else uh, your favorite thing might be. Uh, and you can definitely do that. And as soon as you put about 100 messages on your, on your send queue, they're going to write in spam, right? There's, there's a huge spam problem with email, one of the, one of the nasty, ugly things about email. Um, but there's things that you can do to avoid this, right? Some of it, uh, it's difficult. First of all, you can't use a cloud account. Uh, that's totally not a starter. Most ISPs will block email coming from cloud servers. So you want to get yourself a real hardware server. You want to get a dedicated IP address. Before you do anything, you got to make sure it's not blacklisted. Maybe somebody else was using that IP address to do nefarious things, and so you don't want that. So once you got that set up, you're going to want a PTR record. This is a DNS entry that basically does the, the reverse lookup, right? If you have an IP address, it'll take you back to what that domain is there. Uh, and this is something that you may not be able to set yourself, actually. Only the owner of the IP address is able to set this, and so you might need to call up your ISP server or ISP service and ask them, hey, can you please bring me a PTR record for this domain, blah, blah, blah. Once you get that sorted out, then you're going to want to configure DKIM, uh, which is just a, a crypto scheme for signing your email as it goes out. Uh, and this is a couple of things, right? One of them, it lets people receiving email verify that it actually came from your servers. Um, it also protects you against other servers trying to spoof your email, pretend they're sending email uh, from you. You're going to have that secret, kind of like SSL, right? You have that secret key, in it, and as long as you're the only one that has it, then you can prove you're the only one sending email from there. Then you also want to, want to configure a center policy framework, uh, which is basically a whitelist of the boxes in your network that are allowed to save an email, right? And so this protects you against maybe some box getting popped and, and sending email out. And if it's not on that whitelist, then it'll get, it'll get ignored by uh, whoever's receiving it. But then you also have to worry about your email reputation, right? And this is sort of what, what people use nowadays to combat spam. And uh, the best analogy I can come up with is basically a credit rating for your IP address slash domain. Um, and you need to uh, sort of monitor things that are happening to, to sort of increase that over time, right? Kind of like you would with your credit rating. Uh, so you need to know, like, am I, are my emails being delivered? And if they're not being delivered, why, why is that? Um, Whoever's receiving my emails, are they throttling my traffic, right? And this is something that big ESPs do. If, they, yours, if it's the first time you're sending email, uh, you're trying to send about 1,000 messages, they're going to say no, like we'll take 50, and then maybe if you come back in an hour, we'll take a few more. Um, sometimes if it's like the very first time you're sending, they'll say like, hey, no, we, we don't want this. If you talk to us tomorrow, we might take it. Uh, and so a lot of spammers don't want to retry, right? They just want to spray out as much stuff as they want. Uh, and, and not come back and, and retry it. So if you're being a good person or a good citizen, um, your traffic will eventually get to them. Uh, also, you want to uh, monitor your balances, right? Uh, there's a feedback loop with a lot of ISPs that'll tell you, hey, look, this email was not able to be delivered. This email address doesn't exist anymore, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and so you want to keep track of those things, too. Uh, but not only that, you also want to take care of your reputation with the people that are receiving your email as well. Uh, and so you want to know things about, like, are they complaining about spam, right? Like when you go hit that spam button in Gmail, it doesn't just move your message to the other folder, it actually notifies Gmail that that message is no good. Enough people do that and then Gmail just, will just flag you as a spammer and everything you send will get dumped into the bit bucket. Um, you also want to uh, measure engagement, right? Like, are, are the emails you send, even though they're being delivered, are people actually opening them? Uh, are, they, are they reading through the content? Are they clicking through the links that you're sending? Um, and so while it looks like it's just a little thing you want to set up, you actually end up having to build all the infrastructure to do these things, uh, which is, for the most part, not central to anybody's business unless you're an email sending company like we are. Um, so the easy way to do it is just have somebody else manage all this stuff for you. Now, reputation, you're always going to have to manage that. Um, but at least the, the hardware part of it, uh, you won't have to, to worry about that. Um, 
Mailgun is, does have a free tier. You can send up to 10,000 messages for free, so if you just want to kick the tires, uh, you can do that without spending any money. One of the things we do is we uh, use shared IPs by default. Now, this is a good thing. It might, it might sound a little weird, but it's a good thing, right? Like, we've been warming up these IP addresses, already have a good reputation, and so as you come in as a new customer, you're, you're actually able to send a lot more email than you would uh, if you were trying to do this yourself. We also have a lot of tools for uh, metrics. Like we, we gather a whole lot of data about the email that we send, uh, and we have a lot of tools to, to give that data back to you. Uh, unfortunately, I won't have a whole lot of time to talk about uh, a, a lot of the features that we have, but we'll, we'll get through sending, and, and hopefully uh, that'll, that'll encourage some of you guys to go check out some of your stuff. Uh, so the way you get uh, started with Mailgun is you gotta add a domain. Uh, we do everything, we segregate everything by domains, right? Uh, and some of the good practices, you wanna set up some subdomains for your different kinds of email. Uh, you wanna separate, for example, your, um, like your newsletter type uh, marketing emails. Make those separate from your transactional emails that actually have to do with your system. And you wanna separate that from your corporate email as well, right? Like, the last thing you want is for some marketing email to be marked as spam and then lose all your corporate email. That would be no good. So once you get a, a domain added, uh, and we've got APIs for this too, so you can do it programmatically. If you're managing like thousands of domains, you could do that uh, through the API. Uh, the next step is to set up some DNS records. Um, and so the two that are required are SPF and DKIM, which I already mentioned, is just to verify the, the senders of the emails. It's a couple of optional ones. Uh, MX records, if you want Mailgun to receive email for you. Uh, and we can do some really cool stuff with that. Like we can parse email and then turn it into JSON and then feed it to one of your systems. So you could do things like have your customers reply to an email and then have that show up in your ticket queue or whatever. Um, it, you know, the sky's the limit with whatever integration you want to do with that. Um, and we save you the headache of having to parse that stuff. Uh, there's also a CNAME entry that you could add, and that's for click tracking. And so what uh, we can do is rewrite any link that is in your email, um, and we'll use the CNAME as an alias into your domain uh, to set up basically a redirect, right? Like people will click on that, it'll come to our servers, redirect back to yours. The reason we need a CNAME is because most ISPs, if there's a link in the body of the email that's different from the domain that sent it, they're gonna assume that's spam. Uh, cool, so once we got that set up, we're ready to send. Uh, you've got two options to send email uh, on Mailgun. One of them is SMTP, which I've talked about. It's pretty standard. Uh, you literally just get your username and password for your domain, drop that into your app, and you're good to go. Uh, we've also got uh, an HTTP API, which is what I'm gonna be talking about sort of the rest of the, the however many minutes we have left. Um, and if you're doing new development, this is the way that I would recommend to go. For one, it scales a lot better than SMTP does. Um, and it's faster than SMTP. Uh, you know, one web request is a lot faster than sending one SMTP request. Uh, we don't actually have a library. You just use requests. Uh, and you can build up your requests. Like, we've got, you know, the routes are all documented on the website. Uh, we just use standard HTTP auth, and you just drop your API key and API for your username, and you're good to go. Um, the data uh, should look pretty straightforward, right? It's just a, it's just a dict with different keys, and, and you can find like from to subject, all the stuff you would expect. This is what a plain text email would look like. Um, a little more interesting example, this is how you would do both text, HTML, and a couple of attachments. And you can all, you know, wrap this all into a single request. Uh, another example, it's a little bit nicer to embed images into HTML. You just have to put that CID tag with uh, the name of the file, and we'll just parse that name of the file out from this file up here. Uh, you just gotta mark that it's inline. And so you don't want to have to worry about generating CIDs yourself and having those match and, and whatnot. Another cool thing you could do is uh, schedule delivery, right? So there's a lot of options you can send when you send email to Mailgun. And the way you set those options is with these O colon tags. And so if you set a delivery time in the future, we'll hang on to that email, and then when it's time to send it, we'll go ahead and get that sent out. Uh, this is cool if you want people to like get their email first thing Monday morning when they're first getting into the office, right? You can set it, your, your email to be delivered at that time. One of the cool things you could do, 
uh, with the API is to be able to do batch sending, right? And so instead of sending us an email uh, per se, you would send us a template and then some recipient variables to go with that template. The way we do templating is with these uh, percent signs and then recipient dot whatever property you want to have there. Um, you can, you can make these whatever you want, whatever makes sense for you, uh, for whatever it is that you're doing with your email. And you can send up to a thousand of these variables. And so what, what the API will do is it will take one of those email addresses, plug in all those values for that person, send the email out, so on and so forth. Um, obviously sending a thousand of those in a single request is kind of cumbersome. So we also have facilities for managing uh, email lists. And so it's just an API call. You create your list, and it could be, you know, list whatever at your domain. Uh, and then you can just use the API to add members to that list, right? Um, and once again, you have access to add whatever variables make sense to you to track in that email list for you. Once you get ready to send emails to that list, uh, you would just, in, in the two, you would put this is the email list I'm sending to. And there's a whole bunch of um, placeholder or um, variables you can access in your template that are predefined. This is only a few of them that I thought were interesting. Uh, the recipient email, obviously, if you want to reference the email for whatever reason in the body, you could do that. Um, we've got full name, first name, last name. And those are parsed from the email address. Like a standard email address will have you know, first, last name, and then email. One of the more interesting bits is the unsubscribe URL and mailing list unsubscribe URL. You can just put that in the body of, of your email and we'll take care of putting a, a URL there that your recipients can click on to remove themselves from the mailing list if they wanted to do that. We also, like I mentioned, collect a whole lot of data. And so we have a pretty, pretty cool like analytics tab on the website where you can go into and you can drill down by like device, like what kind of devices are being used to, to open my emails. You can tag emails, uh, tags you could, they're, on our end they're pretty um, generic. Uh, you can sort of give them meaning as it makes sense to you. Uh, but a lot of people use them to track like uh, marketing campaigns, right? Like, uh, I'm going to tag this, whatever campaign I'm doing this month, and then we'll break that down by tag. Um, we can keep track, like I said, of, of how, how many people open your email. Uh, the way we do that is just through HTML. We'll embed like a little uh, invisible image in there, and when people load that image, we'll know that they opened the HTML. Obviously, it doesn't work if they got image loading turned off or if they're only reading plain text. Um, Clicks, like I mentioned, we, we track those by setting up a redirect system. Um, we can keep track of that stuff. Uh, and there's lots and lots of data, and we actually make the API available that we use to build the, the dashboard so that maybe you can build your own dashboard with that. Uh, and that's it, I think I'm, I've got a couple of minutes for questions, if anybody's got questions. Yes, uh, but it's ticket, oh sorry, the question was, do we offer support for the free tier? Yes, we do, but it's ticket only. You don't have a phone number to call. Yes, in the back. Can you talk about the reputation uh, aspect of like, when you send your emails and or, like you're being reputable more or less. Um, how do you to help increase the reputation of someone who sends an email? That's a great question. How do, so the question is, how do we help increase the reputation of somebody who's sending email? Um, we give you a lot of guidance. Some of that stuff is, is always going to be on your shoulders, right? Like make content that people really want so they don't complain about it being spam. Um, a lot of it too is, is us managing uh, the, the rate at which we send. Like some ISPs have uh, requirements of sending at, at a certain speed or retrying things, uh, cleaning out your mailing list for you when we get bounces and stuff like that. Um, if you're like a super high volume sender, there is like managed plans in which one of the one of our email expert guys will sit down with you and like actually work out a plan on, on how you can increase that stuff. So does that help answer your question? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Follow up? Sure. Yeah. So who's your like who would you recommend your tool to as a user? Like if you need to do something specific, then we are the perfect solution for you. So okay, so the question is what kind of user would be the ideal user of Mailgun? Would that is that a good 
Good. Okay. Uh, so our tagline is we're an, an email server f f by developers for developers. And so uh, our, our ideal customer is not like a marketing guy that's going to come in and, and try to design an email on our dashboard or anything. Uh, it's, it's, it's strictly for developers, and that's why we focus so much on APIs and stuff like that. Cool. Awesome, awesome, Pythic, yeah, cool, cool. So if you got an email from, from them, you got it from us, sweet. Cool, well, I think I'm out of time, so thank you. If you got any more questions, just meet me outside.